It encompasses all dramas and supposedly meaningless meanings. That is, all dramas are contained within the mantra, and the limitless wonderful meanings are produced from the mantra. This is one way to explain it. I have another way of explaining it. Of explaining it, all encompassing means holding the three commas of body, mouth, and mind entirely encompassing them to make them pure. Precepts, samadhi, and wisdom, and the three non-outflow studies are upheld. Great dharanis are not the same as small ones. A small one is just a little mantra, and its effect is not as great. What is spoken of here is a great dharani. Samadhi is concentration, the wonderful path of cultivation. Ananda wants to cultivate the wonderful path to the dharmas of the samadhi of the great all-encompassing upholder. Now Shakyamuni Buddha is going to proclaim the genuine drama. Sutra, he said to Ananda, Although you have a strong memory, it only benefits your wide learning, but your mind has not yet understood the subtle secret contemplation and illumination of Shamatha. Listen attentively now as I explain it for you in detail. Commentary. The Buddha presents the topic. He tells him in advance that he is going to explain to him. He tells him in advance what he is going to explain to him. He said to Ananda, Although you have a strong memory, it only benefits your wide learning. Your memory is excellent and you learn a great deal by the use of it. When things pass before your eyes, you do not forget them, but your power of memory can help only your learning, your ability to open wisdom through hearing. But your mind has not yet understood the subtle secret contemplation and the illumination of Shamatha. Shamatha is the doctrine of creatitude. It has an unspeakably wonderful power of subtle secret contemplation and illumination. But your mind has not yet understood. You have not realized it in the least. You haven't least the least bit of understanding. Listen attentively now as I explain it for you in detail. You should pay particular attention now and listen to me while I explain to you bit by bit, point by point, layer by layer. Don't cry, Ananda. Be good. And I will tell you now I explain it for you. Don't be sad. Sutra and may this explanation cause all those of the future who have outflows to obtain the fruition of Bodhi. Commentary and may this explanation cause all those of the future who have outflows, those of the future includes us who are here now. We are now the future referred to then. Everyone is said to have outflows before they are certified as having attained the fourth fruition of Ahachi. Outflows means every kind of fault. If, for example, someone likes to drink, he is said to have a drinking outflow. Those who like to smoke cigarettes have a cigarette outflow. Those who like to eat fine food have the outflows of eating fine food. Those who like to wear good clothes have the outflow of wearing good clothes. If these examples don't make it clear, then let me put it this way. In general, whatever you like most is an outflow. You say, what I like to do most now is meditate. So that must be a meditation outflow. That's different. Meditation directs you upward. When I said the things you like most, I meant things that send you downhill. If you like things which make you go down, they are outflows. Outflows do not refer only to the things you have done in the past. If a thought stirs in your mind and you say, I used to have that fault and now I have changed, but I still think about wanting to do it. That is an outflow. That's how fierce it is. All you have to do is let the Thoughts stir in your mind and you flow down. If you don't move your mind, you ascend upward. Our hearts is of the first, second, and third versions 
cannot be said to have no outflows, but when one attains the fourth fruition of ahaship, there are no more outflows. Now the Buddha speaks of causing all those who have outflows to obtain the fruition of body. How can the enlightened fruition of body be obtained? You need to have no outflows. If you have outflows, you cannot expect to obtain the enlightened fruition of body. Do you want to try things out? You have outflows because you have been trying things out from beginning this time until now. So don't continue to be so confused. Don't act as if you hadn't even heard that what I have said thinking the Dharma Master probably wasn't referred to me. There are so many people here that he is undoubtedly talking about someone else. The little phones I have don't matter that much. I'm fond of that phone and I don't need to give it up just yet. Why? Because the Dharma Master is not talking about me. He's probably talking about someone else. But you shouldn't fool yourself. If you fool yourself, you will miss the opportunity to become a Buddha. From beginning uh, this time onward, you have flowed through birth and death in this Saha world, getting born and dying, getting born and dying, roaming around and forgetting to, to return. That's really upside down. Now that you have met the Buddha drama, you should quickly resolve to be courageous and vigorous and wake up. Don't continue to roam around and forget to return. Sutra, Ananda, all living beings turn on the wheel of rebirth in this world because of two upside down discriminating false views. Wherever these views arise, revolution through the cycle of appropriate karma occurs. Commentary. As soon as you read this section of text, you should experience immediate terror. You should be shocked. Ananda, all living beings turn on the wheel of rebirth in this world. The Buddha calls on Ananda, calls to Ananda to say, and says, All living beings of this world spin on the wheel of birth and death, flowing and twisting through births and deaths. They spin like the wheel of an automobile, sometimes being born in the heavens, sometimes entering the house, sometimes they become asuras, sometimes they are people, sometimes they become animals, sometimes they are hungry ghosts. The turning wheel of the six paths continually revolves without cease because of two upside down discriminating false views. The wheel is turned by two kinds of perversions which results when the conscious mind makes distinctions and gives rise to false views. These views stem from individual and collective karma. Wherever these views arise, at any time or place that these false views come into being, revolution through the cycle of appropriate karma occurs. Whatever is seen is false, there is nothing true. What is meant by false views? If we truly understood the mountains, the rivers, the great earth, the houses, buildings, structures, and dwelling places would not exist. That presents a real problem then, because if there isn't anything at all, where am I going to live? You say, you still live in your house, don't worry. Wherever these views arise, revolution through the cycle of appropriate karma occurs. You receive a fitting retribution for whatever karma you create, both individual and collective. If you do good, virtuous deeds, you get reborn in the heavens. If you commit crimes, you fall into the hells. Whatever karma you create brings you an appropriate retribution which you must undergo. In whatever place you create a particular incident, you will undergo an appropriate retribution on the turning wheel. The Buddha Dharma is very subtle and wonderful. Those who are within the Buddha Dharma may not be aware of its advantages to them, and those who are outside the Buddha Dharma may not be able to find out the bad points of being outside. But within Buddhism, every bit of good you do and every single offense you commit is accounted for, and the accounting is never wrong by even a hair's breadth. 
Buddhism is also completely free and equal. There is absolutely no prejudice. Why is this said, said to be so impartial? All living beings, including hungry ghosts and those in the house, can become Buddhas if they resolve to cultivate the Buddha way. Even the worst people can eventually become Buddhas. Even the worst animals can eventually become Buddhas. Externalist sects say that bad people are always bad and that there's no way to save them. But in the Ming Dynasty, the tiger bowed to Great Master Lian Chu, became his disciple and wanted to protect him. Wherever Great Master Lian Chu went, the tiger followed him. No one was afraid of Great Master Lian Chu, but when the tiger arrived on the scene, people kept their distance. They caught sight of the shadow and ran away, crying, A tiger is coming, and everyone ran for cover. Monks back. They asked people to give them food. Great Master Lian Chu was no different. He also begged for his food, and when he didn't have any food to eat, he told the tiger disciple to go out, go out begging. But everyone is afraid of tigers. Who would have dared make offerings to one, you ask? Your point is well taken, but Great Master Lian Chu had taught his tiger to be good and not to harm anyone. So after a long time, anyone came to know that the tiger was a genuinely good tiger and no one was afraid of it. Besides that, Great Master Lian Chu had taught it to enter the city walking backwards and people weren't so afraid when the first thing they caught sight of was the tiger's tail rather than its head. What is more, own great master Lan Chu's disciples recognized that their tiger Dharma brother had come. The ones who had taken refuge before he did called him little Dharma brother tiger, and the ones who had taken refuge after he did called him elder Dharma brother tiger. And when he arrived, people fought to make offerings to him. This one gave three dollars, that one gave five dollars, another gave eight dollars, and another ten dollars. By the time the tiger had finished his begging round, there was enough to feed them for a whole year. So, although tigers are very evil, this one knew enough to take refuge with the triple jewel and protect it. He was not bad, and in the future he can become a Buddha. That is an example of how equal the Buddha Dharma is. The Buddha Dharma is also very free. Judging of good and evil is of your own making. No one puts any restrictions on you. No one says you absolutely must do good things and not bad things. All I can do is exhort you not to do bad things, but if you are determined to do them, I can't make a jail exclusively for my disciples who don't listen to my teaching. There is no law like this in the Buddha Dharma. There is no talk of putting people in jail to cause them to change their minds and reform. Sutra, what are the two views? The first consists of the false view based on living beings, individual karma. The second consists of the false view based on living beings collection share. Commentary the two kinds of upside-down false views mentioned above cause all living beings to revolve in the turning wheel of the six paths. After they are born, they die, and once they die, they are reborn. Their births and deaths never cease. The cycle is never cut off. It is because these kinds of false views take control that people undergo birth and death. What are the two views? The first consists of the false view based on living beings' individual karma. It can also be called the false views based on one's individual share, and the false views based on the collective share can also be called the false views based on collective karma. Individual karma is what makes you different from other people. It's, it is your own particular private karma, not the same as anyone else. False views based on the individual karma means that you have your own particular opinions and activities, and so the karma you create is particular to you. 
people's false views based on individual karma make them display their differences and exhibit their peculiarities. Liabilities. Display their differences means they show themselves to be unlike other people. They always feel that they're not the same as the ordinary lot, and the karma they create is special. How? Absolutely, everyone wants to be number one. Everyone likes to be first, and this is because each person's karma is different from everyone else. This too is a false view to display differences and exhibit peculiarities. Are both instances of false views. They are instances of false thought, false deeds, and false behavior. The individual karma which results is all created from false thoughts in the mind, false thoughts of great expectations for the self. The higher, the better. People put on a special style, and individual karma is the result. The second consists of the false view based on living beings' collective share. The collective share is what is the same as everyone else. It can also be called public karma, which Include such things as natural disasters, drought, and starvation, and man-made calamities. The heavens fall and the earth revolves, and innumerable people are killed. A hundred thousand, or a million, or even ten million people are all killed at once in a single place. That is public karma. False views based on the collective share. False thoughts create this kind of collective karma. Because living beings confuse things for themselves and recognize a thief as their son, they create the false views of the collective share that is collective karma. It is false views created from false thinking. Views here does not necessarily mean what is seen, but refers to opinions. People's opinions are shared collectively. Everyone's opinions are identical. Living beings' false thinking creates this kind of false karma, and they then they undergo a false retribution. It is said they give rise to delusions, create karma, and undergo a retribution. In the beginning, they don't understand, and that is why they create karma. Once they create the karma, they must undergo the retribution. I will tell you about a response resulting from collective karma. In China, in the thirty-third year of the Republic, nineteen forty-four, there was a drought in the province of Hunan. Not only was there no rain, but incalculable swarms of locusts came raining from the skies. Each locust was about three or four inches long. They flew through the air and did nothing but eat the crops in the fields. They would swoop down and strip the fields of sprouts and shoots, no matter what kind of crops were growing. The locusts were fierce. They came in droves, which covered the skies and blocked off the sun. People could catch a whole butterfly net full with a single swab, and they'd bring them home to eat because they didn't have any rice or any other food. Then people ate the locusts. The locusts ate the crops, and so people ate the locusts. For the most part, it is easy for a child's Buddha eye to open. And at that time, there were children who saw why there were so many locusts in the air. They saw that there was an old man in empty space with a long white beard spitting the locusts out of his mouth. As his spit fell, he turned into locusts. There would be no way to estimate. How many there were once they fell to the ground? They were more than a foot thick, not just at one place, but for a radius of several hundred miles. Wouldn't you say this was strange? This is truly an example of collective karma of the false views from the collective share. The people caught the locusts and brought them home to cook them, but when they put them on the table to eat them, they turned into human excrement. The locusts turned into human excrement by themselves. They didn't wait to be eaten to turn into it. Wasn't that strange? No matter how hungry people are, 
They cannot eat their own excrement. That's what their comic obstruction was like. That's how fierce it was. How could it not be false views? People fled from Honan to western capital of Chang'an, a distance of more than 800 miles. An incalculable number of people died on the road every day from starvation. When people die of starvation, the hungrier they get, the more they laugh. They died laughing on the road. So I say that dying of starvation is not bad. That's what happened in China in the 33rd year of the Republic. Not just one person, but many people told me about it. I didn't witness it personally, but many drama masters related the story to me, ones who had been there at that time and endured that hunger. I didn't ask whether they ate the locusts, so there is no need for you to ask me that question now.